I have another DAT machine. This one's a DTC 59 PSJ. This is a Japanese imported DAT machine that was only available in the Japanese market. Again, brought to me because the guy that overhauled it didn't have the ability to do the alignment. Let's check it out. I've got another one of these Sony DAT machines. This one's a DTC 59 ESJ. The J means Japanese version. This one's a 100 volt unit, so we'll have to use the Variac to power this one up. And again, this one needs an alignment. So before I power this one up, we'll turn the voltage down to 100 volts. There we go. Close enough. 100 point. 100.1. There you go. 100 volts. Again, this one, same mechanism as the last couple of units that I've serviced. The difference, of course, on this one is it's a 100 volt unit. The only difference really is the power transformer. And that power transformer could be swapped to a 120 volt transformer if you could uh, find one. But uh, trying to find a 120 power transformer for one of these units today would probably be uh, a stretch because they haven't made DAT machines in so many years. I'm just uh, giving myself some protection here so that I don't get a shock while I'm working on this thing. There we go. Okay. All right, so I'll plug the unit in. And like, well, I guess I'll put my test point on as well, right here, because this one came in for the same thing that the other ones were brought in for. Same guy who owns them. And he's done the mechanical work as far as changing out uh, parts, like the pinch roller and stuff that's worn out. But uh, he doesn't have the doesn't have a scope in order to do the tape path alignment. So he's brought it to me to do that. So I'm going to attach switch point test point right here. So I'm just going to attach my little, my little wire here to the switch point. That way it can extend that and then the second point that we take the RF off of is off of this multi-connector. It's this white wire here. That's the RF out from the, the preamp. So the second probe goes on there. Okay, two scope probes. One clipping onto my extended switch point. The other probe, my signal probe, ground to the chassis. And the other side is going to go right down to this one here for testing. So, first, we'll load the tape and see whether anything will play. So I don't hear any distortion on this one. So this machine might be, this machine might be right on or very, very close. So we'll get the test point here and just look at this, the waveform. Oh, it's not bad. It's not perfect, but it's not really well. It's, it's got a bit of a dip. Here, I'll show you guys.
Here our fast forward. And our rewind. And back into play. Looking good. Now we'll just uh, do our final tests on the machine. Make sure that it's able to track and uh, search out tracks. So I hit my AMS, should go to the next track on the tape. And then rewind back and cue itself up for track number four. And there it is. Go back to track number one. Track number two. And this machine is fixed. Say so this one didn't require much, this one was not far off. And again, the guy just brings these to me to have me check them because he doesn't have a scope. And if you don't use a scope, you're you're working blind. Yes, some people will say, I can do it without using a scope. You know, I can, yes, anybody can get things close, okay? You might be able to get it so that it's playing without perceived distortion, without noise. That's always possible. Because there's, a, there's error correction built in, but there's also a, a leeway of error. So the waveform might not be perfect but it will still play okay. The problem that happens when you do that, and you can do it with VCRs too, lots of people align a VCR without a scope. VCR, an analog VCR, is much easier because you can see it in the picture. As the signal level deteriorates a bit, you'll start to notice the picture at the top or the bottom of the screen will start to become distorted. So a VCR is a little easier to set up without a scope. You still need a scope to do it correctly. Digital machines like a DAT machine or a mini DV or a digital 8, it's pretty much mandatory if you want any type of interchangeability. If you're only going to be playing your own tapes, if you're only going to be making your own tapes and playing your own tapes back, you can be off and your self-recordings will sound perfect. The problem arises that if you try to give the tape to somebody else to play or if you try to play somebody else's tape, that's when you need to have a tape that, or need to have a deck that is aligned to the proper specifications. As I stated in the last video, this tape that I'm using that I made was made on my Tascam DA40, which is the machine that I recently purchased. It has, well, when I purchased it, it only had 160 hours on it and it had been through a shop that had certified it because it had been used in a recording studio. Uh, it was it was what they called, a machine that was called to make the one-to-one the one -one safety copy. And the recording studio, it was a, one of the more recent decks that they had purchased. It was a backup machine that was purchased for making copies, making backup copies. So it didn't have a lot of hours. It wasn't a machine that was used constantly for editing. It was a machine that was used for making backup copies. So it had very few hours on it since the time it had been certified. And then what happened is one of the regulators popped on it. The, the machine went dead. And rather than repair it, it was right at the transition where hard drive recording was taking over the recording industry and it was taken out of service and that's where I managed to scoop it. But the mechanism on it, I had to change a belt because it had been sitting for years without being used after it broke down. Like the, the deck that I've got broke down like probably 10 years ago. Uh, it was it had only been in service shortly because the guy I bought it from was telling me he was a, worked in a recording studio. He was telling me that the machine had been purchased to make backup tapes on and it packed it in. And uh, then they just took it out of service and it sat and then I scooped it so it had very very few hours so I know that the transport on mine is going to be as close to factory as you're ever going to get because it was never touched the belt was changed on it and uh, the 5 volt regulator one of these regulators here in the power supply was what, what that's what went wrong with it that's why it was taken out of service uh, anyway uh, so I know that all my tapes that I have that were recorded on my various Sony machines all track up perfect. I've put the I've put the task cam on the scope and it all my Sony tapes track absolutely perfect on it. So I trust that it is accurate 
that's what I used to make the tape that I aligned this one to. So it's uh, because I don't have factory alignment tapes. The DAT factory alignment tapes were, well, I guess they were around, but when I was in the service business, we weren't servicing DAT machines that much, so we never bought into the DAT alignment tapes. We bought uh, the VCR alignment tapes, beta and VHS, and we bought the audio cassette alignment tapes, but we never bought into the DAT um, alignment tapes just because we didn't see a lot of DAT machines in the time I was in the business. I saw maybe two or three. It wasn't a big... DAT never made it big as far as consumer um, recording went. It was in the in the professional market, in recording studios, radio stations, TV stations, production centers. Yes, DAT recording was done extensively, but for home market, it never really made a huge impact. And of course, now this format's got staying power because they don't make it anymore. You got all these collectors out there that uh, want to collect these things, and the price has gone up substantially from what uh, they were a couple years ago. I think uh, you know four or five years ago, you couldn't give one of these things away, and I was just on eBay and seeing decks that are going for like six, seven, eight hundred bucks. So yeah, they've got they've they're like old reel-to-reel machines. They are certainly uh, holding on to their value. So. I'm sure this machine is going to get sold. That's why he wants the alignment checked. He wants to make sure everything's perfect because uh, whoever's going to buy this thing wants to be able to play existing tapes that they probably already have. Okay, that pretty much does it for this one. I'm going to run my my playback tape that I can't play. I'm going to listen to this because uh, I don't get to listen to this tape that often, but it's a pretty good one. And I think you know it's got pretty good music on it. You can see right here from the cassettes themselves, these were destined for recording studios they had mastering audio cassette these are the tapes that recording studios would have made the master recording of all your favorite stuff this is what was sent out to the CD replicating plants at the time when they did their mix down they went on to tapes like this and they came in various lengths this is a 15 minute tape they came in 15 19 24 uh, 46 minute depending on what length the CD was going to be Something like this, a short tape like this, a 15 minute tape. This probably would have been for uh, like radio commercials, right? Radio and, and, and for sound. For uh, a lot of times radio commercials were sent out from the studios when they, they would cut a radio commercial and they would actually put it on DAT and send it out to the radio stations. And they were used these short tapes like this. Anyway, that's uh, this DAT machine back up and running. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon.